Okay, we're all good to go. Hi, everyone. Thanks for joining in. Um, really excited to have Gigi Fenster joining us. Um, Gigi has two previously published works with Victoria University Press, and she holds a PhD in creative writing and various law degrees and teaches creative writing and law. She lives on the west coast of New Zealand's North Island, and her latest book is A Good Winter. Hopefully people can see my book there and just want to mention um, anyone watching if you have a question for Gigi if you type it in comments um, I'll read it out to her and you'll have a chance to win a copy of A Good Winter thanks to text publishing so thanks so much for joining us also want to say that I've got a terrible thunderstorm at the moment so um, hopefully I don't lose connection but also I have my dog who hates thunderstorms lying right next to me so hopefully he doesn't distract everyone too much so yeah like I said thanks for joining us just wondering if you want to start off by telling us a bit about a good winter Sure. Kia ora, Jackie, and um, thank you so much for having me, and kia ora to the Global Girls Online Book Club, which I think is just fantastic. So, um, yeah, A Good Winter is my third book, um, and I actually wrote this book some years ago, and I had an idea in my head that I wanted to write a sort of tender, gentle, soft book, um, and I, I had my character, and I started writing, and she did not want to be tender or gentle or soft. <laughs> it's like a bitter and angry and lonely and... And, and kind of pissed off. Um, and so it's a book about this character who is bitter, angry, lonely, and pissed off. Um, and she's about six years old, into the neighborhood comes another woman who she befriends, um, and she becomes increasingly kind of obsessed with this woman and the woman's family and the woman's grandson. And as the novel progresses, so that obsession grows um, and Perhaps I'll leave it there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, that's a great um, background to, to your book. Just wondering, could you tell us, what was the first idea you had for the book? Um, so um, I knew that I wanted it to be about an older woman. <coughs> um, and, <laughs> poor thing. Um, about an older woman um, and about a friendship between two older women. Mm. But at the same time, I didn't want it to be soppy and I wanted to recognize that, um, yeah, I didn't want it to be soppy. So the idea was that I did want there to be some sort of sexual tension um, and, um, and so on. So that was my initial idea. Um, once I started writing, the character just sort of ran with it. It was um, it was a book which was written quite quickly initially, the first draft, mm. um, and then I left it rewrote, left rewrote, but the first draft came out quite quickly. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And have you always wanted to be a writer? Um, I think so. Maybe some. I was always a reader, and I think all writers are, are mm. must be readers. And yeah. Um, so and I think I always had an idea, but it always felt kind of like weirdly embarrassing. I mean, and I don't know if other writers there have that feeling like, you know, I felt like, like there was somebody sitting on my shoulder saying, who do you think you are? You're such a wanker, mm. you can't be a writer. Oh, and, you yeah. know, that, that sort of that, that, that self-conscious yeah. feeling. Um, I have a sister who's a writer. You say yes if you recognize that feeling, by the way. Is that a feeling you recognize? No, but I've heard a lot of writers say that. Yeah, okay, yeah. so I'm um, pleased yeah. I'm not the only one. Yeah. Um, I have a younger sister who is a writer. Her name is Rola Zanopoulos, and she, she's written four books. Mm. When she wrote her first book, then it made me think, okay, I need to, you know, she can do it, I can do it. Um, and when I moved to New Zealand, I kind of, I didn't know anybody, um, and I was kind of lonely, I guess. Mm. And that loneliness is quite a good space to start writing. Mm. You, you know, you, you don't, the, the, you, it, it's sort of like nobody gives a shit what you're doing. Yeah. So I took away that self-consciousness. And so I was 40 years old when I started writing. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, and, and I really, really regret that I didn't start earlier. Mm. I really regret it. And yeah, just mm. keep saying all the students, anybody out there, just start early, start early. And you're teaching writing yeah. now? Yeah. 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 I teach creative writing yeah. as well. Yeah. Yeah, and do workshops in it. Yeah, yeah. Okay. We have some amazingly talented, like young people coming through. 
Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and what did you do um, before you were an author? I studied law and I taught law. Um, and I do think that the legal, I never practiced as a lawyer, but I think that the legal discipline was really quite helpful because I think a lot of law is storytelling. Mm -hmm. um, and also a lot of it is like about consequences. People do something and it has consequences. And I think that in writing, there's, you know, there's a lot of that. Also, there's an event and it has consequences. Um, so I think the legal training was really helpful for the writing. I still yeah. do the, the teaching of some law. Mm. Uh, but yeah. That was, mm. that was what I did, mm. yeah. And some of the things you dealt with gave you ideas for your writing? Yeah, I guess so. And my next book that I'm working on at the moment is actually um, kind of tr uh, follows a series of court cases. Okay. To tell them like in a, in, in a story, to tell them as a story yeah. and to talk about the characters behind them as characters and um yeah, so that's that's the next book that I'm just busy working on at the moment. Mm, mm, no, that sounds good, yeah. And um, could, when you decided that you wanted to write a book, like you saw your sister writing and that, did you have someone who really encouraged you to do you the know, writing? I, I didn't. I mean, I think that my parents, and particularly my mother, who was a big reader, was always very encouraging on literary things and, mm. and you know, and was always just generally encouraging. But I didn't really have anybody like that. But what did happen was, um, so after I came to New Zealand, I started writing and, and found a writing group. And I think that finding a writing group is was for me all important. Um, and that writing group told me about a master's program, which I then enrolled in. And then I found kind of my my group and my people. And I think that's <laughs> Having a group like that for me was just all important. It kind of normalized it. It said, you know, you're not bonkers. This is a normal activity. Yeah, yeah. And it was, was very, really very encouraging. And we're still very encouraging of each other. Yeah, that's great. Yeah. And how hard or easy was it to get that first book published? Um, the first book, um, actually, I was quite lucky, I think. Um, because it wasn't too <laughs> difficult to get it published. That first book was a novel. Um, I, I sent it to the first publisher, I rejected it, and the second publisher I sent to, to took it. Um, but um, New Zealand, I think, was unusual at the time. It was quite small, and I had done a master's, and mm. um, I think that I was I was lucky. I don't think things are still the same. I yeah. think that at now, I don't, I don't, I don't know. You think I don't know about... if it would have even been read. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. could you tell us what you like reading yourself? And I'm wondering if maybe there's something you want to recommend that you've been reading yeah. lately. So, um, well, first of all, so I, I read a wide range of things um, as long as it's well written. Yeah. I think you might be a bit the same. I'm, you know, I'm very fussy about the writing. Um, yeah, so I read a wide range as long as it's well written. I did pull out some books which are like next to that I'm reading at the moment. Um, this is Entanglement by Brian Wolpert, who's a New Zealand writer. I think this is an amazing, amazing book. It's, a, I guess you might say it's about a time traveler. Okay. Normally the idea of time travel, I'm, I'm not a fan of. Mm. Um, but this is, um, it's a book about so somebody who has, there's something happens that they feel guilty about and they... Okay, that sounds like an inch. And what? is that a New Zealand author? This is a New Zealand writer, yeah, mm. Brian Welford. He's mm. actually a poet normally, but this is his second novel, I think. Okay. That sounds like um, an interesting one. It, it's really interesting. Mm. I really, really, and brilliant writing, beautiful mm. writing. Um, and then at the moment, I'm meeting Kate, this Kate Atkinson transcription, which I'm sure every Kate Atkinson is always good. Yeah, think, you know, yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah, you can always like pick her up and, and know it's going to be solid, wonderful writing. Um, I recently finished Denise Minna. I like good crime. I really like good crime. And Denise Minna, I, I recently finished. Um, what else? Oh, this is for, for nonfiction. I also pulled this out. This is also New Zealand writer Ingrid Horrocks. Okay. Where we swim. It's essays um, for nonfiction, for people who like nonfiction essays. Mm -hmm. uh, I would rec recommend that. Oh, and then, um, of course, if you haven't already read the Damon Galgood, The Promise, which won the Booker Prize. Oh, yes, yeah. I haven't yes, read it, but yeah. 
Oh, it's amazing. So and I've like become that annoying person who said, I was reading him 15 years ago. I always thought he was a good He's a wonderful writer. And The Promise is a beautiful, wonderful book. I really recommend that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, thanks for those recommendations. That was great. We always love getting recommendations. I'm wondering as well, what about when you were growing up as a child? What did you like reading then? Oh, that's a nice question. Um, so, uh, well, first of all, I, I had a... My mother was a speech and drama teacher, and she used to read to us, and she read to us like for years. I remember being an adult going on holiday with my boyfriend and my and and my family, and my mother was still reading to us. And she used to read us Dickens, um, a lot of the Victorian books. So um, as a child, we read a lot of those. Um, uh, yeah, the Railway Children, um, the Secret Garden. You know, all of those. Sort yeah, of they're all great. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, they are there, yeah, all good. And then, of course, as an adolescent, moved on to sort of Wuthering Heights, which I guess was that sort of natural progression. Um, I think now, if I were growing up, I'd read quite different things because I think what we were reading then was kind of the colonial books, you know, because the English. Um, mm -hmm. And I think that now there's there's some quite different things for, for children. Yeah, you know? yeah. And when you start writing, do you know the ending before you start? Um, you know, not long ago, I heard that Australian writer Michelle de Kreutzer, is her name Michelle de Kreutzer, she wrote The Lost Dog. Oh, yes, um, yeah. I, I don't know. Yeah, I heard mm -hmm. her speaking and she said she always knows the mood of her ending. She doesn't know the, the ending, she knows the mood of the ending. Yeah, that's interesting, yeah. It's, it is interesting. Mm -hmm. yeah, I think it's a really nice, yeah. So I always know the mood of the ending. Um, which I, when when she said that, I thought, yeah, that 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 rings true. Mm -hmm. um, in both of my novels, there's been a sort of, I guess, not a mystery. I don't want to say, but something that had, it's uncertain what's going to happen. And in both of them, I kind of resisted the ending, but in the end, did go for that. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not a planner, um, so yeah, but I do kind of have the end the mood of the ending yeah, yeah yeah and do you ever have writer's block um i don't know i think well so i have a job um, yeah. well until you know so until recently i was i was doing i was working mm. now now my job is closer to the you know to the writing because i'm teaching more writing but until recently i was working and that really did interfere um, that yeah, that yeah. really is good because I think we need. I think you need. I mean, I think you need to teach the writing, treat the writing as a job. Yeah. You know, you turn up and you put in the hours. Mm. Um, and I have a colleague who quotes somebody. I don't know who he's quoting. Who says, "You turn up at your desk and you wait for inspiration, and you wait for ten minutes, and if inspiration doesn't arrive, you start without it." Yeah. And I think that's really <laughs> that's you know. Yeah. So yeah. So um, I think um, I have gone for periods where. Look, very long periods where I don't write, it's usually because um, of work. Yeah, so work not getting more work. that you don't know what to write. Yeah, yeah, yeah. usually yeah. Work, getting, work getting in the way. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And if you don't know what to write, I mean, I think writing exercises are always fantastic. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, writing exercises is always a good start. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And what do you think makes a good story? Oh, that's hard. Oh, that's very hard. <laughs> Well, okay, I think the characters mm. um, must be good, and I think there has to be like um, there has to be some sort of a longing at the heart of it. Mm. Yeah, so there must be some something that somebody is longing for. I feel like I don't. Yeah, there must be some longing. Yeah. Um, I think. Oh, that's an interesting. Oh, now I'm going to have to think about that. <laughs> <laughs> um, the characters. There must be some longing. There's something that pulls us, you know, that draws us. Um, I guess it's about like the longing that somebody's, you know, there's, there's, there's something that they want, that they yearn for, that they long. Yeah, for. yeah. We see whether they get it. I, mm. I guess, yeah. I'll yeah. have to think about it. <laughs> yeah. And, nice. and you said you teach creative writing. Do you have um, any tips you could share for any um, new writers? Oh, that's not, first of all, read. You have to read. Yeah. You have to, you have, yeah. to have to. Read. I have some students who say, I'm not a reader, and I say, Well, you're on the wrong fucking course. Mm. Because, you know, Sarah, you can't. If yeah, you're not a reader, exactly. You know, I, if you yeah. don't. Yeah. yeah. 
you know, it's like the, the, you, you breathe in and you, the reading and you breathe out the writing. Mm. So yeah, I think you have to read and you have to write, mm. I guess. Um, but um, so the tips, I, I, I think a lot of it also is about developing writing habits, um, you know, like you're turning up um, and, um, and looking for that, that thing that the character's longing for, that yeah. journey that gives her, yeah, I would mm. say that. Mm. And that's the sort of why does the story matter? What's at stake in the story? There must be something at stake. So I think that's, yeah. But I think the main thing is just to do it and also not to listen to that horrible voice on your shoulder. Yeah, yeah. Horrible voice. <laughs> um, you, you, my sister also teaches creative writing and she says to her students, you have to write faster than the voice on your shoulder. Oh, really? <laughs> Yeah, yeah, so you just write, different. and then, you know, you just write, you get it done, you don't listen to them, mm. and then you edit. Yeah, no, yeah. that's good. Yeah. And edit, and edit, yeah. yeah. And do you have any writing rituals? Uh, oh, that's another nice question. I think I'm actually quite precious and awful about it. Mm. Um, you know, I, 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 um, I like it to be, I like to have a four-hour block. Um, I like it to be ideally in the morning. I have a, um, a little office. I'm very lucky in my garden. I have a little office that I can go to. Um, sometimes there's coffee. I have the coffee. So I think I actually probably am a bit ritualistic about it, about marking off the space. Yeah. 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 Mark. So now I'm going and I'm doing that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, um, could you, sorry. <laughs> so what part do you find the most difficult of your writing process? Ooh, I think I struggle with, um, I struggle with the order that information must come in. So mm. I find that I spend a lot of time re reordering things, moving things around. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think that that's probably what I find the most difficult. I think perhaps it's also what I enjoy the most. Mm. So I write, 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 and then I spend ages re, re like moving stuff around. And then once I move something, then checking, are there any ghosts that I've left from the yeah. old version? <laughs> and you know that, I think that that's probably where I spend the most time and the most effort is. is um, that's my, and my and I'm I'm always in awe of writers. Some writers who like Denise Minow, who feed the information in such careful, the information is so well fed at just the right, mm -hmm. the right time. I'm really in awe of that. Yeah. 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 And um, do you have a favorite place to write? Oh, my office, definitely. Yeah. So, yeah, I have an office that looks out over my chickens. I keep oh, uh, chickens I and my window looks out over the chickens and um, the chickens are like a, a sort of living screen saver kind mm. of thing. They, they just wander around there and that's definitely, yeah. And I have yeah. my books at the moment. I'm, I'm doing research, so I have my books there. And yeah, I'm very lucky. It's a very, very, very nice place. I yeah, have. sounds nice. It is, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and when you're writing, are you someone who likes to share what you're writing with someone as you go along, or do you just wait till the end? I and... wait until I've edited. Yeah. I wait until I've done some editing. Mm. I find my early drafts are really not very good. Mm -hmm. um, so I do need, to, I, I wait until I've edited. Yeah. Um, and in fact, that was something which, you know, having a writing group really taught me to share because I was a bit. Um, tentative about that um, but I, I learned the importance of sharing yeah. I think it is really important to share but um, as I say my early drafts are normally not very good so once I've done a bit of editing yeah and how do you find the writing community in New Zealand I know um, we've spoken to a lot of Australian authors who say um, how everyone's really supportive and that what would you say about the New Zealand writing I think community? the same with the New Zealand writing mm. community it's really supportive um, um, it's a small community. Well, mm. I guess uh, actually, no, maybe having no, maybe relative to the population, it might be quite a large community. Actually, mm. it's a very supportive community, and um, I think also, and I don't know if this is unusual, but there are quite a few universities that teach creative writing, and I mm. think that that creates a sort of community. And it's not only university students. I mean, it's not you know, um, but uh, I wonder. I think maybe that creates a bit of a community. Yeah. So it, 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 yeah, a, 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 a supportive community, and and it's important that I think because otherwise you feel like you, you're nuts. You know, mm. doing this yeah. yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. And do you have a favourite snack or drink when you're writing? 
Copy, copy, copy. <laughs> <laughs> I actually, yeah, I don't um, actually, I, 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 I know it sounds ridiculous, but it's quite difficult to eat and type at the same yeah. time. So, <laughs> so um, but I do always, I try to write in the morning and normally with mm -hmm. coffee. Yeah, definitely part of the ritual. Yeah. yeah. And how do you feel about reading your reviews? Um, I think, well, uh, oh, that's another interesting question. I do read them. I yeah. do read them and I've learned yeah. a lot from them. I've learned to really a lot from them. So a good winter has been quite interesting because um, it had some completely divergent reviews, mm. completely divergent reviews, which has been really interesting. Um, and one review actually said, this is a very divisive book. I so <laughs> you know, people, um, and, um, and I've learned, to, I, I, you know, I've learned a lot. Um, I don't like an attitude. I've heard, heard friends who say, oh, you know, a reviewer gave them a bad review. Then they say, oh, well, you know, that's a stupid person and that's a no, no, no. And I really don't like that attitude because yeah. I think we learn from reviews. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. yeah, that's yeah, that's interesting. Um, thanks so much for joining us. It's been great chatting to you. Um, you so and much. really great. We had a few people join, but we didn't have anyone ask any questions but, <laughs> but if anyone has any questions just want to encourage them to maybe type them afterwards that would be great um and wondering if you want to share with people how they can keep in touch with you yes so i am on instagram um and i don't know if you can see my name but it's gg fenster on instagram and i've also got a website which is gg fenster and very very happy to hear from people and i mean actually that's been the best thing about instagram yeah is from people. Yeah. yeah my posts are not very good i'm a bit hopeless but i hope to improve but um it's yeah having contact with readers and so on through instagram has been fantastic so i really welcome that so it's yeah gg uh, finster or my website is gg finster yeah no that's but, great yeah, and yeah. i do have a question come through so yeah. Kelly wonders who inspired your writing journey the most? Oh, that's another nice one. And I'd have to say my mother. Yeah. My mother. As a reader, yeah, because she grew she she, she we grew up, you know, she was a reader and I can always I always picture her with a book and always reading it. You know, one of those people who the first thing she says to you is, What are you reading? Um, and I think, oh, and, and then my sister, my sister as a as a um because she was a writer. And um, if it's somebody not from my family, if I had to think of another writer, I wonder who another writer would be who inspired. Um, I'd have to think about that. Yeah. Um, who another writer would be, but um, I think my, my situation is unusual because I come from a family where they really where they are. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I was very lucky. Yeah, and Kelly's also wondering about the title. Um, is that something you chose yourself or? Yeah, so this title I chose myself. The title of my first book, actually, um, a colleague came up with, and I thought he came up with a really good title, better than anything I could have come up with. This title I came up with, um, A Good Winter, and it's actually in the opening the opening um, lines. Um, but And, and I think that the, the title can be quite tricky, so I'm pleased it's a nice question because I think the title speaks to more than just the title of the book because it's, mm. it's kind of trying to give it something about the heart of the book or the essence of the book um so um, and i see sometimes with my students i'll write a story that doesn't have a title and i really push them to say you you need to yeah. if you, if you're struggling with the title you might be struggling to work out what you know what you're saying mm. Mm. um so yeah so thank you for that question i think it's really important to think about titles title, actually. yeah 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 and while we're looking at your book as well, do you want to show your cover again? Oh, isn't this cover amazing? Yeah, sure I think this is just such a good well. cover. Jessica Horrocks did this cover. Mm. Um, and I, it's, it's, I think it is such a beautiful cover. Yeah. Um, I love the, the sort of, um, you know, the, 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 the hint of darkness. Yeah, and, and the little yeah. child just looking over the, over yeah. the top and, yeah. Yeah, I think it's an inspired cover. I really so. Yeah, um, th that's yeah. To Jessica Horrocks, I think it's an, a, a, an outstanding cover. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I know yeah. in Australia, a lot of authors like missed being able to do book launches and stuff like that. Yeah. How have you gone with your books? Um, so I, I did miss 
doing launches. I, there was a tiny mm. window where we could have a um, a small launch with it, where there was a limit in the number of people. Mm. But we had a small launch locally here, and my kids, my two daughters, launched the book, which was just amazing. They were so wonderful. They did a really good job of it. Yeah. Um. So we had that tiny window, but other than that, I mean, this is why we so appreciate forums like yours. Mm. Mm. Um, because it 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 um it it has been a shame that yeah yeah yeah, yeah. and and we really love that authors join us so that we can learn more about new authors, which is really great. Yeah, no, it's a wonderful so it's thing. That, yeah. yeah, and then also there is an audio book of this coming out um soon, I think. Oh, okay, and, great. Uh, I hope that with the audio book, then there'll be more. Yeah. 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 yeah and one last question before we finish mm -hmm. off kelly wonders i know you gave us some recommendations but if you could choose one five-star read for 2021 what would that be ooh, 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 ooh. i think i would have now i'm trying to remember everything that i read i think i would have to say and i know this is a bit um not very helpful because it was the book of prize but i think uh, i'll Oh, uh, I was going to say The Promise, the Damon Galgut. Mm. Um, uh, I loved Letters from Commando, Letters from Komodo uh -huh. by yeah. Sean Durrell. Um, oh, I think I would probably have to say The Promise, yeah. Damon Galgut, the yeah. which is a bit boring. <laughs> I'm sorry, <laughs> because it did win the booker. Um, so, but, I th oh, but then I read uh, The Winch, Winch Elm, Winch Elm. Pops okay. in my head. That's yeah. a, a sort of a crimey psychological thriller one. Um, oh, the New Zealand writer Pumare. Yes, so. yeah. yeah. He's read on some great ones. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah. So those are the ones that, that pop up. Yeah. yeah. Thanks for that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, thanks so much for joining us and thanks for everyone who joined in watching. And thank thanks. you. Thank you so much. Yeah. Bye, everybody. Okay. Bye.